Okay, so in this video, we will continue our discussion of algebraic vectors. And the key from the previous video was that algebraic vectors, or vectors for that matter, are points, and at the same time, points are also vectors. And so if you think of how you would perform algebra on algebraic vectors, well, how do you add algebraic vectors, how do you subtract them, and how do you multiply them by scalars, by constants? Well, you already know how to do this because you already know how to add points together, how to subtract points together, and how to multiply points by scalars. And because points are vectors and vectors are points, you already know how to do all these things. So I won't bore you with that. This you should already know. Let's not consider the basic notion of norm and see how we can compute the norm of a vector algebraically. We'll do it for R2, for vectors with two components, and it's the exact same thing for a vector with three components. So if I give you a vector, say, in R2, in the xy plane, assume that both coordinates are positive, just to simplify the picture. And suppose I give you vector u. So I'll give you the vector in its algebraic form. So its x component is, say, u1. Its y component, say, is u2. As always, if you give me a single point in the plane, I can view the point as a point or also as a vector whose terminal point is this point, but whose initial point is the origin. By connecting these two, I can form the vector, say, u. And again, in terms of its coordinates, the x component of the vector is u1, and the y component of the vector is u2. If you recall, the norm of u is just the length of vector u. The norm is a synonym for length. And the question is, how do we compute the norm of u algebraically? Look at the picture. What we have naturally is a right triangle, where the length of the base is u1, and the height of the triangle is u2. So we can naturally use Pythagoras' theorem. The length of the vector u, the norm of u, is simply the hypotenuse of the triangle. By Pythagoras' theorem, the norm squared of u is the hypotenuse squared equals the base squared, u1 squared, plus the height squared, u2 squared. So quite naturally, we can solve for the norm of u by taking the square root on both sides, and so the norm of u it's just the square root of the sum of its coordinates squared. It's the root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. And that's it. This is how you find the norm of an algebraic vector, the root of the sum of its components squared. And you may ask, well, what about if we had a vector in R3 with three components? So what if our vector u was a vector in R3, therefore had three components, u1, u2, u3. I'll let you figure it out, but you use a similar picture and you'll realize that you have to apply Pythagoras' theorem twice. And if you do so, guess what? You get the exact same result. The length of an algebraic vector is simply the square root of the sum of the components squared. So u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared. And that's it. And you'll see if you produce a picture, you'll get to this result by applying Pythagoras' theorem not once as in this case, but you'll have to apply Pythagoras' theorem twice. And I'll let you think about that. Okay, so we have the norm of a vector. Recall that we have a basic property for the norm. The norm of a scalar multiple of u, we can move k outside, but of course in absolute values, times the norm of the initial vector. You can prove this property very easily with these formulas for the norm. And again, this is left as an exercise. 
one little definition, and that is of a unit vector. Actually, before that, one simple observation. A vector can only have a length of zero if and only if, well, of course, vector u is the zero vector. Any other vector than the zero vector will have a positive length, so a vector can only be the zero vector if its length, if its norm is zero. So this is really just a simple observation. Now, this is a little definition. We see that a vector u is a unit vector. If, well think of it, unit means one, so u is a unit vector if its norm, its length, is equal to one. So a unit vector is a vector whose length is one. A natural question to ask is, given a vector, how can we naturally construct a vector in the same direction whose norm is one? So a vector that is a unit vector, but has the same direction as the original vector. Think of the following problem. Suppose this is vector u, and suppose the length of vector u was two. Well, you can naturally form a vector that is in the same direction as u, but now whose length is one if you, of course, do one half of u. This is a vector that is in the same direction as u, but whose length is a half the length of u, therefore whose length is a half of two, which is one. Well, what if the norm of u, say, was three? Well, you would multiply u by a third, and again, this vector would be a third times but three times shorter than vector u, therefore the length of this vector would be also one. What if the norm of u, of the original vector, was say a quarter? Well, if the length of this vector is a quarter, you would multiply the vector by four. And now four u would be a vector whose length is one. Right, if the vector is of length a quarter, four times the vector will be of length four times the length of the initial vector, and of course, you'll get four times a quarter, which is one. So hopefully you see the pattern here. If you have a vector, and you want to build a vector whose direction is the same, but you want a length of one, you must divide by the norm. One over two, one over three, Four is one over a quarter. See, so if you divide a vector by its norm, the direction stays the same, but the vector becomes automatically a unit vector. So this is a little result, but sometimes very useful. So if we have a non-zero vector, so if u is not the zero vector, then 1 over the norm of u times the vector itself is a unit vector. So for any non-zero vector, multiply the vector by 1 over its norm and you have automatically a unit vector, which of course is parallel to u, has the same direction because you multiply vector u by a positive number. So the direction is preserved, but now the vector will be of length 1. Let's prove this, and the proof is just one line. How do we prove that a vector is a unit vector? Well, its length must be 1. So this vector is a unit vector if it has a norm of 1. Well, property of the norm. We can move constants outside the norm and put them in absolute value, but of course the norm itself here is positive, so we don't need the absolute value. We'll get 1 over norm of u. Now we've moved this outside, and we're left with the norm of u. 
but norm of u over norm of u that's just one and that's our proof so the vector one over norm of u times the vector itself will always be a unit vector so that's basically it for the norm so if you want the norm of a vector take the square root of the sum of the entries squared and if you want to build a unit vector multiply the vector by the scalar which is 1 over the norm of the vector so for example what if I gave you vector u which was 1 negative 3 4 and I said construct a vector that is in the same direction as u but of unit length all you need is the norm of u and that is the square root of 1 squared which is 1 plus 3 squared which is 9 plus 4 squared which is 16 and all you have is the root of 26 and so 1 over the norm of u times vector u will be a vector whose length is 1 and whose direction is the same as vector u and that vector is 1 over the root of 26 times 1, negative 3, 4. You can leave this like this, or if you want, you can multiply through each coordinate of the vector by the scalar 1 over root of 26. This will give you 1 over root of 26, negative 3 over root of 26, and 4 over the root of 26. So there you have it. But personally, I find this form much nicer than this form and that is the norm of a vector and of course you have the familiar properties of the norm which hold true for vectors in R2 or R3 whether you have two or three components let's recall a few of those properties so the norm of a vector is equal to zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector we know that the norm of k times the vector u is just an absolute value k times the norm of vector u. We have the famous triangle inequality where the norm of u plus v can never exceed the norm of u plus the norm of v. And we have the so-called reversed triangle inequality which has the norm of u minus v will always exceed the norm of u minus the norm of v. In our next video, we will consider one new vector operation, which is the dot product. It will be on the surface a purely algebraic vector operation, but as we will see, it has a really deep geometric meaning.